Hey friends, I'm back and this time I'm going to be playing with some brusho. I've never used brusho before, but today we're doing it. So I'm taking my mop brush and I have a piece of watercolor paper here. I believe it's five by seven because I'm going to do a five by seven card, of course. And I've wet it thoroughly with my, my mop brush. And these brusho uh, pigment powders are, or watercolor powders, whatever you want to call them, they are amazingly intense. Um, you're seeing me tap the powder onto the wet paper, and it's just spattering just a smidgen of powder all over. And I'm going for a deep, dark, foresty background here. I know. Who would think that I would do a forest background, right? All right, so I have a whole lot of water on here. And I'm trying to sop up a little bit of the extra. You can't see it, but my my paper is still pretty buckled. And what do I do? I add some more water. Only this is pearlized water. I wanted the extra shimmer. Um, so I dried that with the heat tool. And... Um, added a little more brush -o, activated it again with the pearlized water, and this is another round of drying. I just showed you the tail end. Now I'm going to take some clean, clear water, and I'm going to spatter it on this. I don't know if this is going, as I'm doing this, I didn't know if it was going to um, reactivate the colors and lift or not. And I leave it there for probably 10 seconds or so, and it, it lifts a little bit. It's pretty subtle. So I'm going to keep trying it. I'm going to let it sit a little longer each time and uh, try to pick up a little more of the color to add more variation. This would make, if I had the right colors, or if I, I might do this later, it would make a good galaxy background, I think. Yeah, it's going to be worth a try. So I am succeeding on picking up a little more, and I do really like that. The shimmer stays from the pearlized water, and now here comes the big reveal. Oh, I love this. I haven't done a watercolor background in a while, not like this. And, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's pretty satisfying. I could make a few of those panels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just make a bunch of panels using techniques and experimenting and playing. I love it. Yeah. Taping it to the board does make this a much flatter uh, background though. So I am using Little Squatch from Essentials by Ellen and I am using some Hero Arts Intense Black ink on some 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock in my Misty I do stamp it a couple of times because I like a nice solid edge. I did keep all of the coloring in the uh, in the video. And if you want to skip past that, I'll have the um, time marker in the description box. So you don't have to watch all of the coloring if you don't want to. I have all the Copic colors listed on the top. And my general method is to lay down the lightest color and work my way to the darkest and come back if I need to, to blend the colors out. I'm going to do a couple of colors of Sasquatches and not all of the images I'm coloring are going to end up on the card ultimately, but it's fun to color all of them at once. And it, it's nice to be able to figure out how you want to color images in the future. And I have a bunch of images here that I can use on future cards. So I have a special affinity to Bigfoots or Sasquatches. Just because one of my boys, his nickname is Sasquatch. We call him that because he's six foot one and wears a size 15 shoe. Yep, from the age of probably nine or ten, his shoe size was his age. And let me tell you, this mama was very happy when his feet stopped growing at size 15. We live near a regional um, city, but it's still only about 15,000. And let me tell you, finding size 15 shoes 
was nearly impossible. <laughs> if there were any, it was like there was one pair. Well, I guess this is the pair you get to have, Dakota. Mm hmm. Yep. And um, my husband and I, neither one of us is very tall. So you know that he's a throwback to my, I think, yes, my mom's father. So my grandfather uh, was half Native American. So there is some tall in my background. Um, I'm actually quite a mutt. Quite. I think I'm 10 different. Uh, nationalities and my husband is two. He actually managed to add one to the group. Anyway, they're all pretty short, um, uh, except for my mom's side of the family. Everybody else is short. My husband and I are average at best and our sons, we have three sons and two of them are short men and all of them. So we've got Dakota who stands head and shoulders above the rest of us. And he takes the moniker Sasquatch quite well. Not only does he have giant feet, all of my men are furry beasts, not hairy, furry. <laughs> and yes, they all have women and they all are happily married, actually. Yes, they are all happily married. Um, what a segue, right? Anyway, because of having my big furry Sasquatch who I love dearly. He's an amazing person. Um, I am drawn to the Yeti and Sasquatch uh, stamp sets. How many stamp sets do I have with a Yeti or a Sasquatch? I think I only have a couple. I always want to purchase more. I don't know about you, but if there's some topic that I love, if there's a stamp set featuring it, I'm very drawn to it. Even if I already have a couple or two or three, like pineapples. Have you seen my pineapple uh, videos or my my series of pineapple cards? Yeah. Or snowflakes or leaves. Holy cow. Those are all items that I have a hard time resisting purchasing. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your kryptonite when it comes to stamp sets and stuff? What do you always find yourself purchasing? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. If I'm the only one, well, then so be it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm pretty much just talking through this entire thing here. Um, wow. It's a very simple coloring. I can't say that it's um, earth shattering by any means. I did try to do a little shadowing on the, the brown Sasquatch, but uh, it's not detailed. I've thought about or and I've started to I've signed up for and paid for a couple of the detailed um, classes on Copic coloring I just don't have the time to spend on that I just want to create uh, I don't um, spend a whole lot of time in that maybe maybe one of these days I'll actually do one of those I don't know I don't know if I am ready to give up the rest of the crafty I like techniques that's my thing. Um, how are you in your Copic journey? Are you right along with me with the simple um, shading and and uh, flicking methods? Is that as far as you're going to go? Whatever tickles your fancy is the right way. And there are some truly amazing Copic artists out there. should check them out sometime. Now, I'd like to say that this theme, the masculine watercolor birthday, was of my own um, design, but it's not. This is part of the Paper Craft Crew challenges, and we are doing a tic-tac-toe style <clears throat> challenge this week. Uh, there's a tic-tac-toe grid of different themes and techniques, uh, and you choose three of them with a tic-tac-toe theme, so a diagonal straight up and down anyway. Uh, and you use those techniques and themes to create a card. And I chose watercolor, masculine, and birthday. 
I do love watercolor. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I have historically done a lot of masculine cards. Now this would work for anybody. I would love to get this card because it's so stinking cute. And this one could be more of a Yeti. Um, it just changes uh, the look. Or maybe he's old. Maybe he's an old one. Although these are supposed to be kind of... They could be kind of small too. Ooh, the first one I colored looks like he could be reaching up for a hug or yay, celebrating or or a whole lot of things. He could be holding a banner. And the second one that I'm coloring, I'm doing in some warm grays. And he, if you went even lighter, you could make him a Yeti. I don't know about the whole blue face thing. Eh, it's cute. I decided not to go that route. <laughs> and I think I ultimately end up using the sitting one. And it had more to do with I wanted the sitting one than the color. Because either one would work with that background I chose. Here's the little mushroom. I This could be colored so many ways. I chose to go just with some W's. And this nice bright red. And I, I've been working with Copics long enough now that I have some established favorite color combos and I also am more comfortable just reaching into my my container of Copics looking for a color that um, I am interested in and just grabbing. I don't have to consult my charts because I had printed off all kinds of charts and color combo um, co color combos that other people had got put together and I would only use those. I was so overwhelmed by the whole Copic color selections and combinations and blending. And I have to say that just playing with them, using them and playing with them and getting comfortable with them has gone a long way to making them easier to use for me. I re really just reach in and grab and I actually kind of understand what I want to do before I get started. Uh, there are coordinating dies <clears throat> for all of the images in that stamp set. And of course, I purchased them and cut out all of those images. I also pulled out the Honeybee Stamps birthday die set. And that has three layers. The top layer, um, I actually took a piece of plain cardstock, just 80 pound cardstock, and had picked up, well, I had made another strip of uh, brush owed watercolor paper with the intention to use that as the top layer, but it wasn't wide enough for the dye. So um, before I discovered that, I had picked up the, the watercolor that was left on my craft mat after I created it. And then I ended up using it for this uh, birthday thing. So I just took those layers. Uh, I did one in black, one in white, and one in the colored, in the watercolored piece. And then I also colored, excuse me, cut out this middle-sized die out of coaster blank. And I am gluing that on the back for a little dimension. I found a happy stamp in my stash and I used... Um, Versafine Onyx Black, and then heat embossed it with, I believe it's green night shift embossing powder. I also embossed the sentiment on the inside of the card. So I took that panel and I actually die cut that watercolor panel using the Honeybee Stamps A7 double stitched rectangle die, the largest one of that set. And I'm using coaster blanks again here to add dimension and this one doesn't really need me to keep it straight because taping it down to that hard board made all that makes all the difference as much as we abuse that paper it's nice and flat I do put my misty on top to keep that um, nice and flat and adhere well and it only has to be under there for a few seconds like 10 um, now I had fussed around a little bit with placement on all of this before I even made the birthday die. I'm going to adhere the trees directly to the watercolor panel. 
and I'm checking placement of my little Sasquatch. I'm going to put these, this foliage behind him. Then I'm going to glue the birthday down. I want it kind of like the scene is emerging from behind the birthday sentiment. So we will adhere that to the card base. And then we're going to put a little bit of, oh, well, it here's the, adhere the rest of the pieces. The little Sasquatch is going to get some coaster blank behind it also. And um, I'll stick the rest of those down. I can, and I don't even know, I'm probably going to use this for someone at work. It is a five by seven card. I have almost completely switched over to that size. It's a good size. A lot of people really enjoy big cards, especially if they're not crafters. To them, bigger is better in general. And a lot of people can sign it. And you know what? I've been sending these bigger cards to my mom because I can fit uh, the four by six uh photos that I print because she does not get internet so this is a perfect size for that boy I, I digress look at that shimmer from all the pearlized water that I spritzed on there I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned a couple things maybe you like Sasquatch too and didn't even know this set existed be sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Click that bell icon so you can get notification. And thank you to everyone who uses my affiliate links. It really helps me continue to make these videos. Bye-bye now. See you next time.